All right, everyone, welcome back to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what we're gonna do is talk about LOTUS, or Law of the Unconscious Statistician. Now, if you remember from last time, what we talked about was the fact that the expect expectation of a random variable x, or the expected value of x, is defined as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times fx of x dx. And the reason this is called law of the unconscious statistician is because it's the kind of thing a statistician would come up with without thinking it needed proof or would just kind of do it after maybe having a few beers like, oh, this is probably the solution. And in this case, it actually ends up being the case. It actually ends up being the case that the straightforward answer is the one that you would expect. So if I was to ask, rather than the expectation of x, I asked for what's the expectation of some function g applied to x? What would this look like? And if you answer, well, let's just replace x with g of x here in the integral. Of course, this won't be big x because this is like a function applied to the random variable. Um, what you're going to have instead, if you were to say the integral from minus infinity to infinity of g of little x times fx of x dx, you would be absolutely right. This is actually what you do. You just substitute in g of x for the function. You don't need to do anything fancy. And of course, we could have just as easily used any other variable as our integration variable. I don't want you to get too caught up in the x's, especially because we have capital X representing our random variable. So I'll say this is also equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of g of, well, I don't know, z times f x of our variable z dz, which we're integrating out. So that's pretty much all you have to do is just replace, is just substituting the function. And there you go. That's why it's called law of the unconscious statistician, because in this case, the really straightforward or unconscious thing that you would, you would expect to do actually ends up working. So let's talk about a few common values of g of x, a few common functions that we have. Um, sometimes what we'll do is we'll, we'll write this rather than expectation, we'll say expectation over x of g of, of our function. So that way, what we're doing is saying we're taking the expectation over x, and that just basically corresponds to the x in this particular part. So keep that in mind if you see that notation. All we're saying is we're taking it over x, and this is really important because you could have multiple random variables, so you need to know what you're actually taking the expectation over. So that's pretty important. So the first one I wanna talk about is, of course, g of x equals x. And in this case, what you get is mu of x, you get your expectation. This is what you get. Basically, g of x is the identity function. You put in a value for x and you get x. That's what g of x is doing. It's just returning the identity. So what you get is this, which is called the, of course, mean or expected value. Pretty straightforward. If g of x is equal to one, what do you get? Well, you simply get one because what you're doing is integrating over your probability density function. Um, there's no value there. You're just integrating over the PDF. And what you get, of course, is one because you're integrating a valid PDF from minus infinity to infinity. So the expectation there is one. Now, if g of x is equal to the quantity x minus mu of x squared, what you get out of this, or what this is called, is the variance of x, or often what we write it as, as the standard deviation squared. So the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. And this is, of course, a measure of central tendency, which is basically, if you look at what you're doing, you're integrating this multiplied by the probability density function. So it's kind of like adding together the deviation, or what we call the variance, from the mean. We should expect, you know, if we have our mean here and pretty much everything is close by, you're only taking up small values, you're only adding together small values, the square distance from small values from this, so you're gonna get a small value. Whereas if your random variable is really spread out, you would expect a much larger value. So this is the variance. Then what we're gonna have is g of x equals x minus mu sub x to the power n. And what this is called is the nth central moment. And the central part is because we're subtracting the mean here, just like in the variance. It's just rather than raising it to the second power, we can raise it to some arbitrary power. And similarly, if g of x is simply equal to x to the n, what we get is the nth moment. <clears throat> 
not the central moment, just the nth moment itself. Now, it's important here to realize that often the central moment is a more useful thing than the moment. What we'll talk about often is centering a random variable, which is removing its mean or subtracting its mean. So in that case, of course, if the mean is zero, then the central moment and the moment or the nth central moment and the nth moment itself are going to be the same. And last but not least, perhaps our most important function for g of x is g of x equals e to the j oops, times nu times x. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, what this is called is the characteristic function of x. You often hear it also called the m gf or the moment generating function um, that'll come into play in a moment but notice what happens when we write the expected value of this of this thing so e of g of x over x of course um, is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the j nu x times f x of x dx and if you look at this and you kind of squint hard enough what this really is, this is like an inverse Fourier transform of your probability density function. So this is like your, you know, your PDF here. And this is what you see in the, it's really taking the Fourier transform. Now, the thing that's different is it's an inverse Fourier transform because if it was the forward one, we would see the minus sign here. So what this really does is this, now, why is this useful? You know, what this is doing is taking the inverse Fourier transform. Why would we care about this? Well, we can actually get all of the moments from this characteristic function by basically calculating derivatives of this moment generating function and then evaluating them at the origin, which is really, really cool. So that's why this is called the moment generating function. If you can calculate the characteristic function of a random variable like this, it's very easy to find all the moments and from there you get to be really lazy. So that's why you see it this way. Of course, we use v or nu here as our as our variable and you just take and often what we do is we represent this by an uppercase oops an uppercase level letter phi so phi of x like this it's a function of nu but taking derivatives and then setting them equal to zero will give you those moments that you're looking for so hopefully this gives you an idea of lotus it's very powerful we're going to be using it all the time to do transformations and of course this is one of those instances where things just work the way you may expect them to right off the bat which is fantastic so in the next video we'll probably talk about joint jointly distributed random variables. Thanks for watching and I will see you then.